Welcome to June the 14th. I'll start from 2017 and then I'll work back to 2014 and take it from there. Something should not happen, but they do. I'm a Liberal Party supporter and I felt that the last election result had been answered prayer. Bill Shorten did not win and Malcolm Turnbull could not last. But I put a caveat on that. Turnbull could not last and the Liberals prosper. In 2009, Turnbull's office asked what he could do to be an effective leader. Journalist Piers Ackerman had written glowingly of Turnbull, excusing his AGW activism as being that of a merchant banker who feels that a tax is a tax. I blogged advising that a conservative leader does not have to agree with a party on everything. Scruples are part of conservatism, but sincerely held beliefs are usually underpinned by much that a leader can use to sway others. I don't think Turnbull paid attention to me, but the argument was embraced spectacularly and he imploded against hockey, letting Abbott get the prize without Abbott having betrayed him. Turnbull called a leadership spill for hockey. Abbott only stood after hockey tanked, calling AGW a moral dilemma. Only spending $100 trillion US for a fraction of a degree cooling in a hundred years' time is absurd. Taking that money from the world's poorest is criminal. Gonski and Finkel are not matters of state, but a resignation letter from Turnbull to responsibility a prime minister cannot abrogate. The US is catching up to Comey's leaking meaning that Russia investigation is bogus. A high-rise building in London is on fire. 24 stories built in 1974, 1 a.m. in the morning. Many would have been asleep in their homes. The fire allegedly began from a short in a refrigerator. Apparently, many could not escape the upper stories. Israel has an invention allowing quick escape from such. People reporting seeing lights and hearing cries from the upper stories. Six confirmed fatalities. A baby was reputedly thrown from a window. Firefighters allegedly were concerned that using water to douse flames might push the flames into places where upper-level tenants were hiding. In 1158, Munich was founded by Henry the Lion on the banks of the river Isar. Henry was a builder who acquired a magnificent land holding before being stripped of it by petty rivals. In 1216, the First Baron's War, Prince Louis of France captured the city of Winchester and soon conquered over half of the Kingdom of England. King John had signed but not abided the Magna Carta. John was a loser who lost. 1276, while taking exile in Fuzhou in southern China, away from the advancing Mongol invaders, the remnants of the Song dynasty court held the coronation ceremony for the young prince Zhao Xi, making him Emperor Duangzong of Song. He only lived another few years. Zhao Xi drowned, fleeing Mongols at age nine years old. 1285, Second Mongol Invasion of Vietnam, forces led by Prince Tran Quang Kai of Tran Dynasty destroyed most of the invading Mongol naval fleet in a battle at Chung Dung. It had been 27 years since the previous Mongol invasion had successfully demanded a three-year tribute. That tribute had stopped. Two years later, the Mongols would suffer a comprehensive defeat at the Battle of Bac Dang. 1287, Kublai Khan defeated the force of Nayan and other traditionalist Borogan princes in East Mongolia and Manchuria. 1381, Richard II of England uh, met leaders of the Peasants' Revolt on Blackheath. The Tower of London was stormed by rebels who entered without resistance. The 14-year-old King Henry agreed to end serfdom, but then the rebellion overplayed its hand and lost all. It is recognized now as a model of socialist uprising. In 1404, Welsh rebel leader Owen Glyndwr, having declared himself Prince of Wales, allied himself with the French against King Henry IV of England. 
Owen had been at the Peasant Revolt and had been successful uh, initially. However, Owen lacked artillery and ships of England became, overcame his resistance. Owen never re surrendered to the English. He was recorded as having died 11 years later.